The place where we come to learn how to live together forever on our beautiful planet Earth. My name is Nena. And I'm Gigi. Nena, what do you mean live forever? Nothing lives forever. Well, you and I won't live forever. So all we have to do is make sure there are children on Earth. And there you are. It's not that simple. We are here, all 8 billion people. And we'll be even more because people will never stop making more people. So, no problem. Hakuna Matata. No Ohala. Actually, there's lots of Ohala, lots of Matata. The problem isn't how many we are, but how well we can live. To do that, we need clean water, safe living space, and fresh air. Now, here's the thing. We have to do it in such a way that we don't make life difficult for other living creatures. I still don't see the problem. All we have to do is make sure we live in such a way that everything else can live too. But you are not, are you? Uh, hello? Hello, Nena. Hello, Gigi. Hello. How do you know our names? I know everything and everybody. I am Earth. You can call me Earth Auntie, and I'm here to tell you something very important about what you humans have been up to. Oh, oh what have you been up to? Humans have been on Earth for less than 300,000 years. All my other animals and plants have been around for much, much longer than that. And yet, here we are. You humans are making it very difficult for other living things to survive. How have we been doing that? By being careless and selfish. Let's take the air that you need to breathe. You've been polluting it. The soil you need to grow food, You've been overusing it and putting chemicals into the ground to force it to work harder than it should. And that's just for starters. I have been around for much longer than anything else. I am going to be around for much longer. I'd like you to be here as well. So I'm stepping in to make sure you humans don't spoil my plans. So listen up. You don't live alone. You can't live alone. You need fresh air, clean water, and land. I can give you that. In fact, you had all that. I know you want nice things as well. You want a nice car. You want a TV and gadgets to play on and places to go and explore. You want a nice life. I get that. But you are using up all the things I created to make a nice life possible for every living thing. You think what you need comes first. It doesn't. Other animals can't find enough space to live in safety because you are taking more than your fair share. You are causing harm. We need to change that, don't we? Yes, you do. And I can help you. Every time you take a step to save the world, the world takes a step to save you. And it all starts with respect. It took a long time to develop the elements we need to keep life alive. they called ecosystems, and they're very clever because different things like land and sea work together to make fresh air around the world. Yes, the plants and trees on land keep the air clean so that we can breathe fresh air. And all animals need fresh air, otherwise we'll cough and cough and cough till we drop. That's right. If humans keep burning forests and squeezing other animals out, it means we don't have clean air. And you know, forests take a long time to create. So we can't just use it up without replacing the trees and making sure animals in forests have enough space to live there. That's called sustainable living. How do we do that? It's not hard. All you have to do is make sure the things you do today don't make life worse for everyone tomorrow. So get cracking. We're on it, Earth Auntie. There are people everywhere trying to fix things. Let's go and meet our friends in Nigeria. In my city, Abuja, 
the capital of Nigeria, there are special collection hubs where we can bring plastic waste for recycling. Recycling is one of the rules of sustainable living. Where does the plastics go to from here? The plastics go to the recycling hub, they turn it back into something useful. But how exactly does this recycling happen? Let's follow this huge bag with plastic and see. Just look at that field of plastic. Wow! This place is called a recycling yard. And here is Miss Funto. She is the chief of recycling. Okay, so what do you guys know about sustainable living? Like you can do it over and over and over, over again. again. Whatever we have, materials we have on earth, right? Yeah. That we use in such a manner that we don't deplete it, we don't, and then we leave the earth in a better way than we met it. What material do you think plastics are made from? It's itself. This is made from petrochemicals. What? And do you know where, yeah, like oil. Do you know where oil is gotten from? No, like under, from the ground. Under the ground, right? And do you know that there's a certain amount of oil that we have underneath the ground? So the more we produce things like this, the less of it we have. If we can recycle these things, then what happens? We don't have to use as much oil, oil from under the ground, right? Because we already oil. produced them and we can keep on recycling. With recycling, you don't necessarily have to turn it back into what it was before. You can turn it into a new product that's useful. If you have eight of these bottles, if you have the right machines, right? Like eight of these. Eight of this, they can turn it into like a jersey. They can turn it into fiber to make a jersey. Did you know that? So what do all those bottles become after recycling? Ms. Funto showed us the whole process. You can see that the separated blues are being crushed. So we crush it, and then, like you can see these two antis, right? What are they doing? They're washing it. And then, we're then going to dry it over there. So once we dry it out there, we now bring it in here and then we put it inside this machine when, when it's really hot, right? And this is our pelletizing machine. Because it's very, very hot, right? We need to put it inside the water. So you can bring that, let me show you. So it comes out like strings like this, right? Like spaghetti. This is melted plastic. And then it comes out like, like so, like this. Oh, like beads. Yes, they're like beads, right? So guess what this turns into when it's done? Covers. Uh, no, not covers. Bottles. Not bottles. It's so this is, this is what it turns into. What else do you think we can make out of this recycled plastic? Cheers. Cheers. What else? You guys are so recycled smart. Recycled beans. Beans, excellent. The same way we can recycle any other waste. For example, paper boxes. What can we recycle them into again? We recycle them into paper. We take this to paper mills and they recycle them into new cartons, new papers and things like that. So what do you see here? What kind of pink 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 cartons? What else? I can see soda, um, tomato, tin tomato. Yes. So any kind of cans, either for drinks or for food. So all these containers can actually be smelted down and turned into another product. Do you know what smelting is? No. Smelting is to just melt down the iron or aluminium so that they can turn it into something else. Reuse, reduce, and, and recycle. recycle. Excellent. Hey, time to check it out. Chuma Chuma. Ready, steady, go. Today, I am going to teach you an African dance which can be found in many places on the continent. Can you follow me? Yeah. So this one is a little bit tricky because you have to look at your right leg while your arms is going to the opposite. So you go one, two, three, and four. One, 
two, three, and four. Yeah? So let's try together. Slowly. One, two, three, and four. 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 Let's try to put in the rhythm of how this dance sounds. Good job, everyone! Remember to do some exercise every single day. What can you and I do to reduce the harmful waste in our environment? Let's think. Hmm. Every household and every school produces a lot of waste. Leftover food, plastic bottles, cans and containers, broken toys and other things we don't need or want anymore. What if we could make up separate bins to help sort out the harmful waste and recycle it? Let me show you how this can work. Create different bins and label them as I have done. Here is the organic waste bin, the plastic or glass waste bin, and the paper waste bin. The organic waste, which includes our leftover food, food peelings can be composted to make fertilizer for your garden, while the plastics, glass and paper can be recycled and reduced on pollution. Look at these bottles that have been reused as planters. They work perfectly. And when buying beverages, choose glass bottles which can be reused instead of the plastic ones. Also remember to use reusable shopping bags when you go to the market, so you don't need to buy another one. Share those tips with your friends, family, and neighbors. How about that, Earth Auntie? We are using the plastic we have to make useful things. We are making the soil healthy by using organic fertilizer instead of chemicals. We are trying to build a healthy habitat. That's a good start, but still not enough. We need bigger schemes, bigger plans, bigger dreams to make the world a clean, safe and healthy place. And you need to remember to do no harm. I know what you mean about bigger dreams and bigger schemes. How about the houses we build? I think we can make them last, I mean be sustainable as well. Just like the ecosystem or habitat you were telling us about. Turns out, we can even build houses which can be completely sustainable, made from simple, available materials, and without any harm to our planet. This is Miss Madeline, and she is taking us on tour to see one of these houses in Delta States. Is look at how Africans have already perfected these things in their built environment. We're going to take a visit to the home of Dima Suwonko, who is Nigeria's premier African designer who builds from a sustainable perspective. Every house starts from the brick, and that's how sustainable bricks are made. What do you call this? Mold. Some people call it clay. Some yes. people call it adobe. But I know often here at home we call it mud. It's a perfect material for building in Africa. When you build your blocks from it, you know what happens? The no. heat cannot enter the house. It's very cool, right? Yes. Touch it, touch it. It feels great. It feels wonderful. So here we are. This is our perfect mixture for making our clay brick. So you all see what he's doing? Yes, ma'am. Does it look a little bit easy? Yes. Oh, perfect. Wow. That's amazing. One perfect sustainable block for building houses. So now we are in the house I was telling you about, okay? So welcome and come on in.
Come and look. Wow, wow right? Exciting, yes. A house that is truly sustainable for our communities. This courtyard has an open ceiling or an open roof. What do you think about it? Beautiful. It's beautiful. What happens when it rains? Rain drops in here and the crops grow up. The rain comes in and it feeds the plants? And it grows. And it grows? Yes. And where does the water go? It goes to that. Yes, it goes out to the drains. That's called an impluvium. So in this building, guess what? There are no air conditions. The house is actually cool because he used the right materials for our weather, okay? Also, there are some vents on the bottom of all the walls that air comes in and it pushes the hot air and the hot air rises and it goes out of the vents on top. We couldn't believe that one can build such beautiful houses out of plain mud. They're good for our atmosphere. They don't cause any bad um, emissions. It's called CO2 emissions. And it makes everywhere very hot. It makes the ozone, the planet, everywhere hot, yeah? So using our clay bricks is better for the environment. It's available. It's everywhere. It's affordable, right? Yes. And it's easy to make. It's easy for us to use. No waste. No negative impact on the environment. And we can build a very sustainable world for ourselves. Good idea? Yes, Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you guys. <laughs>
these flies lay in the sticks here. Are you seeing those ones? Uh, they're so weird. Let us remove the rubber bands. But carefully, we don't want to lose our eggs. The other side, Found they, them. they are little. Check. Oh. Ooh, oh they look gosh. So, I also have some here. They look like rice. The eggs are here. Liam is removing the eggs. Wow. Yeah. We are taking our eggs, so we are going to hatch them. Hmm? Mm -hmm. oh my Here gosh. we are. This is where we raise maggots from. It will take four days for them to hatch, and then baby maggots will be put in this nursery. Oh my god, they are so oh tiny. God. They are so, so tiny. These are four days old. I mean, their birthday was last week. The, their birthday. <laughs> you want to celebrate their birthday? Where is the cake? <laughs> oh my god! Hmm? Why is it that particular fly? It's not a vector. A vector, it is any insect or any animal which spread diseases. So one? black soldier fly is not a vector. It doesn't carry germ. Yes. So that's why we are doing it. Oh. They don't bite. They don't carry diseases. Meaning they are harmless. They are harmless. Here they are about one week and a half old. They have fed on, oh on a variety of garbage, eh? jackfruit. Eh? Yeah, jackfruit eh? You see? Have you ever gone to, to any town eh? and you happen to, look, to see a lot of garbage? Eh? Yes. When the place is stinking, we are collecting that garbage. We are bringing it here. Look the way maggots are enjoying them. That was once a watermelon. Can you imagine? Where? That yeah. one. Now look oh, it. Yeah. Now look at it. It is all eaten up. Now these ones are ready for harvesting. And this, my friends, is how you harvest maggots. So we are putting this harvesting net. Check, check, How do you do me so easily? How are you not scared? It's because I love them. Hmm? Once you do something you love, you can perform perfectly. You see how beautiful it is? You can use your... Not me! Science? It is. This is real science. Harvesting is done. So in here, our, our feeders already have seed, but we are going to get empty ones. Okay. So you pour here. You scoop a little as you put there carefully. find our feet tasty as well. Did you see any difference when we entered and bring the maggots? Yes, do you, do you? They, they become hyper. Yes, this is a natural food. Because even when they are out there, they are looking for worms and maggots. It's nutritious. Look, that's what the maggots have turned our waste into. Fertilizer. Mm. This is manure. What does manure Manure do? help pl helps plants to grow. They have nutrients in them. We are taking our manure from uh, maggot farming yeah. to feed our plantation. Since this is organic fertilizer, it has many benefits. This one is more nutritious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's yeah. beautiful. And that's enough. So you see how maggots have superman-like ability to turn harmful waste into high-quality protein and fertilizer? Who knew flies and waste could be this useful? I can see from your face that you think we should do more, Earth Auntie. But the thing is, we can't do a lot on our own. We need everyone to help. Actually, I'm really proud of you for trying all these things. I mean, you humans can be so squeamish. So the fact that you've learned to use flies and maggots that way is impressive. I know what else we can do. We can ask everyone watching to find more ways to save the planet. We can think about it. Maybe we can write or draw it. And even if we can't do it now, we can do it later on. Planning for the future. I like your thinking, girls. It shows that you really care about me and our survival. And you're learning that love shouldn't hurt. Yay! I'm happy that you are happy. Aunt Auntie, can I ask you a question, please? Ask me anything. How old are you? I am four and a half. Four and a half? That's not a lot. I am four and a half billion years old. Wow! So you knew dinosaurs? Of course I knew dinosaurs. I know everything, everywhere and everybody. I have been running things for a very, very long time and I am not stopping now. So what do you need to do to keep us all going? I know. Let's look, let's learn, let's love. Don't, Don't forget, forget to, to make, make it fun. fun.